What's going on guys? Hope everybody's having a great week. It's a beautiful day outside. I am at home like a good bit of you guys around the world right now. I'm praying for all of you guys. I wish you the best. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay away from the public. Let's get rid of this thing. As I am going to be home for the foreseeable future, I'm going to try to do a few more uploads than usual. I try to put one out a week and try to do a little bit more than that. While we're on the subject of being at home, a lot of people are not spending money, uh, especially on watches, and some companies are really suffering. One such company is uh, Cheapest NATO Straps that I've mentioned before, and actually will have one of their straps on one of the watches I look at today. I'm not affiliated at all with Cheapest NATO Straps, but I do like them. Uh, they're a great deal for what they are. I'm going to do a full review this week sometime on all the cheapest NATO straps that I do currently have so uh, stay tuned for that but uh, pop over on their website I'll leave a link below and uh, pick up a strap or two we don't want to see we don't want to see these small businesses go away so if you can get to a small business online and help out if you have those funds definitely do it if you don't have those funds please don't do it I don't want you guys to hurt yourselves trying to help others we gotta, we gotta look out for each other, but we also have to look out for ourselves. So, um, that being said, we're gonna do a little watch content today. I picked up another watch. Um, it's a watch I've been wanting for a while to supplement uh, my Seiko collection. So, let's check it out. Okay guys, so welcome back to the channel. I'm wearing my Casio Royale as usual on steel. Love this thing. It could be my only watch if I had to. Uh, but we're going to look at this Seiko today. And while I unbox this, guys, if you want to help me out personally, go back and watch those old videos. When I hit a thousand subscribers, I monetized this channel with ads. Um, you know, they're cringy videos. They're not very good. But those ads do make me a little bit of money, which... You know, it's not much, but seeing as how this is my only job at the moment, till we go back to work, it would help me out. Uh, this is the SKX009, the uh, J model, actually. And since I've never had a new Seiko, uh, I haven't seen any of this. Lifetime warranty card, uh, instruction manual. Um, kind of interesting. I've never owned a new Seiko, so all that's new to me. So let's take a look at it. This is the uh, Seiko SKX uh, 009J. So this is the Japanese version on rubber. Um, as you can see, a lot of similarities with the uh, SKX 007. Uh, the hang tag denoting what it actually is, um, the caliber it is, all that. Um, but let's uh, let's open this thing up. I can tell you right now, I already am going to switch out this uh, rubber for something else. I don't really like the feel of the uh, Seiko rubber so far. Um, and then we had a Seiko 5 21 Joule um, bracelet tag. That's that's interesting. But at any rate, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the feel of the rubber so far so I feel like that's going to be changed almost immediately uh, maybe to one of these cheapest NATO straps like what's on the uh, Seiko SKX 007 on the left and of course the SKX 009 on the right the SKX 007 on the left is a K series the uh, 09 on the right is a J series there are some noticeable differences already you can see in the dial uh, but more similarities than differences. Uh, for all intensive purposes, the uh, SKX07 and SKX09 are the same watch, just different colored bezel. Uh, the SKXK and SKXJ are, for all intensive purposes, the same watch, just made in different factories, guys. But the dials are slightly different. And on the wrist, it fits very nicely, as of course it would, because this uh, SKX007 did. Having said that, I do like the uh, Seiko rubber a lot better on the wrist. It's more comfortable than I expected it to be straight out of the box. But it will get changed probably later in this video to either uh, the OEM um, bracelet or 
a uh, cheapest NATO straps NATO or something to that effect. So uh, the watch itself, so you do get a two year warranty with a new uh, Seiko, so I have that. We have the day date display of the 007 on the 009 here. Uh, Luma Bright hands and markers just like the 007. Screw down offset crown just like the 007. Unidirectional bezel, this time in the Pepsi coloration with the first 20 minutes in red and you can see that difference here uh, both have the 200 meter water resistance both have the Seiko Hardlex mineral crystal which is their proprietary crystal uh, they're both 43 millimeter cases with 13 millimeters in thickness uh, from case back to crystal and a 22 millimeter lug width. Although this cheapest NATO straps strap I have on the left here on the 007 is a 21 millimeter. So you can kind of get away with a slightly thinner strap or a slightly thicker strap, but they are two uh, watches with 22 millimeter lug widths. Um, all in all, uh, the same watch, you can see the uh, slight font differences of the SKXJ uh, over the SKXK on the left. Uh, not only font differences, but uh, print differences. Um, slightly different changes where the uh, Made in Japan at the bottom, the uh, right below the orange lettering on the uh, watches, that sort of thing. But side by th side, these watches are the same piece uh, with the exception of a slightly different dial, a slightly different bezel. You have the same um, 7S26 non-hacking, non-hand winding automatic movement uh, in both of these pieces. And you can see the beat rate is exactly the same on each one. Which do I like better? I don't know. I, I think I like each for different circumstances. The uh, For diving purposes, the uh, 009 would definitely be a little easier to read with the first 20 minutes in red, uh, whereas the SKX 007 um, is more of a subtle aesthetic. Um, for those that don't want that pop. I personally like having both. I wanted both in the collection. They are both icons. Uh, if I had to choose just one, it would probably be the SKX 007 on my left, but fantastic pieces nonetheless. And as I said, I was gonna change out that rubber strap and I have changed out that rubber strap. I've put the OEM bracelet on it. This bracelet retails for around $45. This is a Seiko part number 44G1ZZ or ZZ for those British friends of mine. Um, you can pick this up from Seiko. You can also pick it up from any uh, uh, sick of retailer pretty easily or uh, like I did on eBay and I think it looks fantastic on this OEM strap uh, or OEM bracelet I should say. These are hollow end links. Uh, you can get um, this same bracelet with solid end links from aftermarket makers. Um, I chose to go with the OEM uh, one because it was a little less expensive and two because I wanted everything sort of original um, but I love this watch. I'm so glad I picked it up. Uh, zero complaints. I will do a follow-up review on the J model as opposed to the K model I've had for months and months to see if I notice any real differences in, uh, you know, the, uh, functioning of the movement, the, uh, life of the, uh, reserve, that sort of thing. But I don't expect to see any differences other than just the uh, dial and dial differences of the two. Um, at any rate, I love them. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, the case back I never showed. This is the case back with the Tsunami. Uh, the front, fantastic. And of course, on the bracelet, you really can't beat that. I'm in love with it. I'd say pick it up while you still can. They are going up in price. They are going to be pretty unattainable pretty soon, I would say. 
um, the SKX7, the SKX9. Both of them are going to be longtime classics, guys. Till next time, watch, subscribe, go back, watch those old videos, help me out a little bit, and uh, we'll see you very soon. Bye. <laughs>